electron configuration. So, electron configure. There, there's going to be some terminology that um, just kind of goes into a little bit of theory. Um, we're not going to focus too much on it. Like I, I won't be asking you guys too much on it uh, in testing. Okay, so don't worry about it. So if if it seems like some of the wording is a little over your head, don't worry about it. I'll we'll focus a little more on what I want for you guys to take out of this lesson, okay? So, in atomic physics and quantum chemistry, electron, electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons of an atom, a molecule, or physical structure. It concerns the way electrons can be distributed in the orbitals of the atom or molecule. So there's the term orbitals now, but we're talking about it in terms of the actual um, orbitals that lie within different energy levels. Okay, that lie within different subshells, and we'll see that in a second. Okay, knowledge of the electron configuration of different atoms is useful in understanding the structure of the periodic table of elements. So we're going to look at um, the elements of the periodic table, see why they're drawn uh, in the order that they're drawn, okay, based on the different energy levels. Okay, so the concept is also useful for describing the chemical bonds that hold atoms together. Okay, so a few, uh, few terms, and this is what I was telling you about. It's going to, might seem to get a little over your head, okay? But I will explain this and simplify this um, with a couple of uh, examples, okay? So electron configuration was first conceived of under the Bohr model of the atom. So this is something that we looked at in grade 9, okay? The Bohr model of, um, of the atom. And it's still common to speak of shells and subshells despite the advances in understanding of the quantum mechanical nature of electrons. So when we look at electrons on a quantum level, we, we, the, the, the idea of the shells that we used to know of is incorrect, okay? Because within these shells, the electrons, we noticed that we had a maximum of eight electrons on you know, the second shell the way we used to look at them, okay? But in fact, it's not really eight electrons. They don't pretty much uh, spin around the nucleus of the atom in that same order, okay? Because they, they spin in different planes um, using like the X, Y, Z planes like we do in math, okay? So an electron shell is the set of allowed states an electron may occupy which share the same principal quantum number, and we use the letter N, okay? The number before the letter in the orbital label. An electron shell can accommodate two n two electrons. Okay, what it, we're looking at is that the first shell can accommodate two electrons, second shell can accommodate eight electrons, and now look at how many electrons on the third shell. Eighteen electrons, and that doesn't hold true with the way we used to draw the Bohr diagram. We knew that on the third shell or third orbital we were holding how many electrons? Eight. Right, but here now we're looking at 18. Okay, and we'll, like I said, we will see um, what all that means in just a second. So, the factor of two arises because the allowed states are doubled due to the electron spin. Each atomic orbital uh, admits up to two otherwise identical electrons with opposite spin. One in a positive half spin, right, and another one in a negative half spin. And what we're going to look at, and we're actually, we're, actually we're not going to look at, sorry, uh, is when drawing electrons, we're going to draw them in this arrow format. One electron going upward to represent the positive spin, one electron going downward. Okay? Uh, and like I said, don't worry about this part right now. We're going to focus on what we're going to see in a moment. Okay. So a subshell is a set of states defined by the common angular momentum quantum number, use the letter L within a shell. So the values of L can be either zero, one, two, or three, okay? And they correspond to something called the S, the P, the D, and the F labels. That will make a little more sense in just a bit. Okay, so we're using the following numbers to represent pretty much subshells. And now, to find the number of electrons from each subshell, we use the following equation here. 2 open brackets, 2L plus 1. So whatever this L value is, we're going to substitute it into the equation, right? So if we, we're looking at L equal 0, so if L is equal to 0, we're going to put 0 into this equation 
2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 will give me 2. Hence, 2 electrons in an S subshell. We have 6 electrons in what we call the P shell, meaning that now, instead of putting 0 into this equation, we are going to put 1 into the equation. So 2L, so 2 times 1, plus 1 is 2. Um, sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. Times 2 is 6. And we get 6 electrons in the P shell. And that's how we get 10 electrons um, in the uh, D shell and 14 in the F shell. So now we're going to be looking at I, pretty much ideally every element in the periodic table, including those uh, lactonides and actinides at the bottom, right? The ones that are separate away from the periodic table. Okay. So here is how the orbitals of subshells are occupied by electrons. This is what you're going to need to know, okay? The way it's, it's drawn out. So we have the angular values of 0, 1, 2, 3 here at the bottom. And we said that in the first, okay, these, this represents the P shell. And the P shell shows us that we, have, we can occupy up to two electrons in that subshell, right? So what we have is the S, 1S, we have 2S, 3S, 4S. So in the S orbital, which is designated by the angular number being zero, okay, we have two electrons that can fit in any one of these, these subshells. Okay, this one represents the P level, the D level, and the F level. Now, let's look here to the N value. Okay, it's numbered one to seven. If you look at the periodic table, and there's a bit of a hint, what do you think these numbers represent? Hmm? The rows. Not the rows, but the Period. periods, right? So period one, energy level number one, right? First energy level, second energy level, third energy level, fourth, and so on and so on, right? Those seven, okay? So those numbers that we have in front represents the energy level, okay? The subshell, okay, denoted by S, P, D, and F, tell us pretty much the subshell in where are the electrons occupy, okay? And what we're gonna see here, and let me just clear what I've got on the screen, is when we look out for this pattern, and you need to be able to write out this pattern because using this pattern, okay, we'll be able to draw out what we call an electron configuration notation format of various atoms. So if we took, let's say, carbon, and we had to draw out, write out the electron configuration of carbon, okay, we'd be using the following. And how does this work, and I'll show it to you guys again, in just a second, is we cross out and we put it with, the, with an arrow starting from the bottom part here. So we have the 1s, meaning we're on the first energy level, right? So the uh, subshell s. And we know that we can hold up to two electrons, right? So the first energy level can hold up to how many electrons? Two electrons. The next, okay, the next, is going to represent the second energy level. And again, in the second energy level, because it's a 2s, we can hold how many electrons? Two electrons, right? But after that, we cross out in this order, meaning, okay, this, this is all going to make sense in just a second, so bear with me. Okay, bear with me. It's going to seem, seem complicated, but what we're going to do is we are going to identify what does S mean on the periodic table? What represented by P? What is D? What is F on the periodic table? Okay, and well, I'll show this again to you guys. So if you didn't understand this, don't worry. It will make a little more sense. So